Hello everyone and welcome back to Passion Week here at Laternal Christian Center, day three. We're so excited to share this, this story with you today, um, but before we do that, we want to introduce ourselves. Um, I'll, introduce, I'll go first. My name is Shane Collins. Um, I'm the office manager and group coordinator. So I, um, if you've ever called here before, um, I've probably been the person to answer your call, uh, the first person to respond. Um, I'm probably also the one that you might have been emailing back and forth if you emailed our general email account. I also speak to a lot of our groups here. Um, I keep the office organized. I speak to a lot of our groups here as well, um, though, to be able to help them plan the retreats that they, that they come and have here, pastor retreats, individual retreats, um, or group events that we have here too. And I am Renee Collins. I am currently the dining hall manager here at Laterno. Um, I basically am in charge of um, all the setting up and um, just instructions for staff throughout um, the time that our guests are here as we set up for groups in the dining hall and um, try to meet their needs. And I am also the um, <laughs> marketing designer here on campus and so basically my job is to create a lot of the content that you see um, that we post on our Facebook page or our MailChimp emails um, and I've also been working on redesigning our website so go check it out. <laughs> awesome thanks for me. So um, today we're actually going to be looking at the story of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane and this story is, uh, is about Jesus um, going to this garden, taking his disciples with him, uh, his, his three, one of his, uh, a few of his disciples, three of them, um, and he's going out there right before his betrayal and his crucifixion and then following the resurrection uh, three days later, which we'll get into later this week. Um, but really what we want to talk about is why is the story of the Garden of Gethsemane and Jesus going there with these disciples so important. So I'll turn it back over to Renee and I'll ask her if she would read that story for us. So we're going to be reading Luke 22 verses 39 to 46. All right. You can follow along if you want or you can just listen. Um, then accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went as usual to the Mount of Olives. There he told them, pray that you will not give into temptation. He walked away about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. He prayed more fervently and was in such agony of spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. At last he stood up again and returned to the disciples, only to find them asleep, exhausted from grief. Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. Thanks, Renee. Um, so just to summarize that story a little bit, uh, Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane before all, all this uh, betrayal and things were going to take place. He went with his disciples, John, James, and Peter, and obviously the first thing he says is pray so that you don't fall into temptation, so that you don't struggle. But then Jesus went about a stone's throw away. Imagine how far you could throw a stone. And that's probably about how far he went away from these disciples as they were supposed to be praying. And he started praying, but he was in complete anguish and struggle and he was facing hardship. Have you ever like had a hard time with something? That's the feeling he was feeling, but like 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times worse. And... Um, in that, he's praying to God, God, if there's any other way for you to save mankind other than me going to die on the cross, would you please show me another way? But he also says, if there is no other way, I am willing to obey you. He goes back to the disciples. He sees them sleeping, and he repeats that. You don't hear it in the story, but in another gospel, it says he prayed that same prayer three times, and each time he goes back and finds them sleeping. So for me, I, I look at this story and I think that's crazy. Um, I think about how stressful that must have been. Like, I mean, if you can think of the, the scariest time, the most fearful time you've ever had in your life and multiply that by like 10, 100,000, um, that would probably be around the feeling that you would experience. And so Jesus 
Um, if you can like look back from the Christmas story up to now, obviously he came and he gave his life up in heaven, came down to earth to die, uh, or to, to share his life with us, show us salvation that we can have through him. And now he's in a position where he's struggling and all these, even his disciples and his supporters are only like they're falling asleep. And it's either them or it's the people who are betraying him. I can't imagine going through something like that. Yeah, I think what makes it especially hard is that um, because God was um, fully God, even though he was man, um, he knew the future and so that he already knew what was coming. And um, so he was definitely experiencing all the pain that came with that mm -hmm. um, knowledge. Yeah, I mean, actually, in part of the scripture, it actually says he shed drops of blood. Can you imagine, like, you know, when you play sports and you and you sweat, but he was so, so he was in such struggle that he was sweating drops of blood or something like that, it says. Um, and I can't imagine what that was like. And as we already mentioned, Peter, James, and John, they couldn't even stay awake. So it's not really the most supportive crew. But I think one of the most important things we should see in this story, too, is that even though Jesus was suffering in absolute struggle, struggle mode, and anguish, hard, having a hard time, he still chose to do what the Father's will was. He still chose to do what God's will was. Yeah, I think um, it's important to follow his example because, you know, when we um, have those human feelings of fear and um, just struggle um he still followed through and was obedient and um he knew what god wanted him to do and it was the only way for him to um give us salvation and so um he still did what was right and um did that for us yeah and so i think i think as we look at this story that's what makes that's just one of the reasons why it makes it so important because for you and for me and anyone watching today, we all know that sometimes life gets hard. Sometimes life doesn't go our way. And so when, there, when we have those times where we're fearful of following God, because maybe it's not the most popular choice, or maybe it's really, really hard to make a decision that it seems like God wants us to make, we can know that God is there to provide what we need, and we can know that obeying Him will always lead to the best results. Um, there's another part of that scripture that she read that says the angel strengthened Jesus when he was going through that struggle and that prayer. And so that's something that we should remember too, that, that, that God will always provide what we need to make it through the struggle. And so as we say goodbye today, I think it's all important for all of us to remember that great sacrifice that Jesus made for us. Um, it's important for us to reflect on that all the way through this Passion Week. But it's also important to know that we can um, accomplish all things through Christ who gives us strength. And so I just want to close this in prayer, and I want to thank you all for joining us today. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for just this time to reflect on your word, and thank you for this story um, about the experience Jesus had in Gethsemane, Lord. And uh, we know that it was tough for him. We know that it was probably one of the hardest moments he ever faced because he knew right after he was going to be arrested and he was going to go to the cross. And um, even though he was struggling, Lord, and even though he prayed that prayer for God to find another way, he knew that if there was no other way, that he was willing because he loved you and he loved me and he loved all of us. And so, God, I thank you for the love that you and that your son have for us. I thank you that you continue to uh, shed that upon us, uh, not just then, but today and every day that we live. And I pray that as we go through hard times and struggles, Lord, that you would help us to trust in you, to put our faith in you, to be obedient, to walk in your direction and choose what you would want for us. And that will be to choose for ourselves, knowing that you will provide what we need to get through it. You will give us the strength. And Lord, that you will love us all the way through. You will get us through whatever struggle we may face. And so, Lord, I thank you for the people watching today. I pray a blessing over them. I pray that they were blessed by this message. And I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.